am Femi OK. You're watching the stream. At the end of January, truckers in Canada were so upset with the vaccine mandates they had to adhere to that they drove to Ottawa and started a protest. That protest is still continuing. On Monday, this is what Joshua Bigger had to say about why he was still out on the streets. I've also lost more friends in the last two years from suicide than I have in my whole entire life. Uh, my brothers have lost their jobs. I know friends that have lost their jobs. So I'm here to uh, stand together uh, for peace, love and unity and scream out freedom as loud as I can until I drop these darn mandates. Freedom! I ain't going home. Hmm. The Freedom Convoy. We are unpacking what is going on in Canada and also apparently spreading around the world. We are doing that with Justin Amar Amanan. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of our show today. Justin, please introduce yourself to our global audience. Tell them who you are, what you do. My name is Justin Ling. I'm a, I'm a freelance journalist um, who uh, reports for a variety of outlets. I've been writing uh, for The Guardian, um, for Politico, for uh, Vice News and a number of other outlets. Um, from I'm currently in Ottawa. You're probably curious as to why I'm sitting in the, the passenger seat of a car. Uh, just on a reporting trip uh, here in Ottawa. At some of the convoy locations uh, just outside the city. Uh, didn't make it back in time, so I'm sitting here. Uh, All right. to warm up. <laughs> Reporting in the field from his vehicle. Justin, we appreciate you doing that for us. Amar, welcome to the stream. Introduce yourself to our audience. Tell them who you are, what you do. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm an uh, assistant professor in the School of Religion and the Department of Political Studies at Queen's University in Ontario, Canada. Um, I study social movements, uh, extremism, and terrorism. Good to have you. Manan, welcome to the stream. Introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you very much. My name is Manan Gupta. I'm the publisher of Road Today magazine, which serves Canada's South Asian trucking community. We are part of uh, Newcom's supply chain uh, division. Uh, good to have all three of you, gents. All right, so if you're watching this on YouTube, you can be part of this discussion. I know you've seen these headlines. I know you've seen some of the footage on Al Jazeera. Got comments and questions? Put them right here in our comment section, and you can be part of today's show. I want to start with just a reminder for our wider audience about how this all started. And we're going to go back to January the 29th when truckers from all over Canada, they converged in Ottawa. Around about 3,000 trucks, 15,000 protesters. Over the following two weeks, protesters blocked US Canadian border crossings. And then on February the 14th, so just earlier this week, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invokes the Emergency Act, giving the police sweeping powers to tackle blockades and also occupations as well. Justin, that brings us up to date. How is this protest going on for so long? Yeah, I actually think it's really important to note that at its very origin, this convoy, this occupation, it's not about vaccine mandates for truckers. We know it's not because mm -hmm. the organizers and the participants keep telling us that's not what it's about. They've repeatedly said this is about all vaccine mandates across the country. This is about all public health measures. This is about mask mandates. This is about, in many cases, the safety and the efficacy of vaccines themselves. And in some cases, this is a demand that the prime minister and the government resign or be removed from office. Right. So it's important to actually know what these people are saying they're here for. There is a predominance, a prevalence of anti-vaccine misinformation at this occupation. There is a preponderance of people who would like to see the prime minister arrested and tried for treason or crimes against humanity. There is a belief here that COVID-19 is being overblown and hyped up in order to restrict our freedoms and potentially to remove our democratic way of life. Mm -hmm. So this protest is about so much more than vaccine mandates for truckers. And the reason people are still here yeah. is because their grievances run so deep and are so broad. Manan, go ahead. I see you nodding your head. Absolutely. You know, uh, I do agree that uh, it's a uh, you know, cocktail of protest. There are so many different varied interest groups joining the truckers. Truckers at large have been fully vaccinated in Canada. As per Canadian Trucking Alliance, more than 85, 85 to 90 percent of truckers have been fully vaccinated. And actually, they are the ones who are still ensuring that our supply chain is intact. You know, there is food enough on our grocery shelves and everything along with. So truckers, they, there is a minority of truckers, which is part of this freedom convoy. But there are mm -hmm. so many other 
groups of people which are frustrated. We all are sick and tired of pandemic restrictions, lockdowns, you know. So definitely there is a cocktail of vested interest. So, Manan, this is, maybe you can help me clear this up, and Justin, do, do jump in, and Amar as well, is that if it's not truckers, where did the 3,000 trucks come from on January the 29th? Well, you know, it's not that there are no truckers out there. There are truckers involved, but not necessarily all of them are anti-vaxxers or they are, you know, uh -huh. they, are, they don't believe in vaccinations. It's basically they want to come get rid of vaccine mandates, especially the cross-border restrictions which came into force on January 15th from Canadian side and then followed by a week later from the U.S. side. So the messaging is quite mixed and that is why you would find a different variety of uh, groups joining the freedom protests. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And, you know, I've spoken to some people who are here who have brought trucks. I've looked at some of the trucks that are here, uh, trucks that uh, cross the U.S.-Canada border, the trucks that will be impacted by this vaccine mandate. They actually have a special number on the side that helps you identify that they are, in fact, cross-border vehicles. Um, and maybe about half of the vehicles have this, this U.S. dot number. Uh, you speak to some of the truckers who are here and they'll admit readily they don't cross the border. They're not even impacted by the vaccine mandates mm. for mm. for. So there are a lot of vehicles here that are not impacted by the mandate. There are vehicles here that are. Um, and, you know, Manon's quite right. Like, there are people here who have legitimate grievances and grievances that are not extreme in nature, that are not necessarily conspiratorial. But again, you know, I've wandered through this protest. I've spoken to the protesters. I've spoken to the organizers. I've looked at the social media feed. I can tell you that the, the prevalence of conspiracy theories, of misinformation, is really, really acute. Amar, can I throw this at you? This is from Twitter um, and uh, from one of our broader community who knew we were having this conversation today. So on my laptop, TOMD says, I've been really frustrated as to why media hasn't been focusing on the organisers' intentions. Partial organisers Canada Unity had explicitly stated a desire to remove democratic authorities, yet media or government has failed to really examine that. Can you unpack the truth of that? tweet, that sure, statement, yeah. um, um, and the direction that that Twitter is going in. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I disagree a little bit that it hasn't been focused on. I mean, I think we've yeah. been talking about it quite a bit, but yeah. I, I do, I mean, to underscore what Justin was saying, I think there is a difference between the organizers of this protest and what you're seeing on the ground, right? The organizers of this protest um, are ones that organized the earlier United We Roll campaign and were part of the Yellow Vest movement uh, in Canada uh, early on. So a lot of them... Um, are outright white nationalists, uh, conspiracy theorists, uh, kind of part of militia movements. One of them went on a kind of na nationwide Holocaust denial campaign. Um, and so these are the people who are behind the organizing element of the campaign, uh, of the convoy. And I, th I do think, though, that um, the people on the ground, um, many of them might have been swept away by the kind of COVID conspiracy theories that we saw uh, after March 2020. Um, but I think... As one of the uh, the person interviewed at the beginning of your clip uh, made clear, I think yeah. there is genuine uh, anxiety and grievance there, right? A lot of people have lost their businesses, uh, there's mental health, children have suffered. Um, and so there is a kind of genuine pushback to mandates and lockdowns. But uh, th I think that has to be separated from mm -hmm. the organizers who are uh, CD characters uh, that we've known about for some time. I think, Manan, as with many protests that we cover when they get into international news, there's always multiple reasons why protesters are actually out on the streets and why the protests have grown. I want to bring in Manbir Barge here because what is fascinating is that most truckers in Canada are vaccinated um, and most Canadians support vaccinations. And yet you have a protest going on that has got global attention. I want to bring in Manbir Barge. He is a trucker. Let's have a listen. I don't support what they were doing at the border and also at the other borders across Canada where they're disrupting the commerce flow between the U.S. and Canada. Uh, I think they should just pack up, go home. As a professional driver myself, you don't see me going out there and uh, doing anything like that. I believe in these mandates. I think they should get with the program and get vaccinated. But don't disrupt any of our commerce while they're trying to make their statement. Manan, is that the majority view of professional drivers, truckers, do you think? Absolutely. And Manbir definitely speaks on behalf of those majority of truckers, those who have been vaccinated and those who continue to uh, keep our supply chain busy. And that is why 
the government of the day was forced to take some some of the you know tough measures because when the international trade and commerce comes to an halt due to these protests spreading out at different port of entries the government has to come into picture because we cannot restrict the flow of goods especially you know when we we want to come out of pandemic you know we really want to make sure that our supply chain remains intact and with international obligations canada has to take some strict measures so that these protests these illegal blockades at many of those port of entries they can be removed I have so many questions. Yeah, yeah you, you go first, Justin. I'll go second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I, I, I actually I think it's interesting that one of your viewers uh, has not uh, seen this notion in the media that, that some of these elements, um, some of the organizers, some of the organizations have been calling for, for rather extreme things and represent mm-hmm. a sort of conspiratorial, paranoid um, element of Canadian society because it, to, to a large degree, they're quite right. The media has been really slow to acknowledge a lot of these ties. Some haven't. I have been doing my best to, to focus on uh, the organizers since before they even arrived in Ottawa, and some of my colleagues have as well. But by and large, the media has been really unprepared to tackle the reality of far-right, extremist, conspiratorial, um, anti-government organizations uh, in this country writ large. And that's been particularly acute when it comes to this convoy and the ensuing occupation. Um, just a couple days ago in Coots, Alberta, uh, the blockade of, of the border crossing there with the United States uh, led to uh, more than a dozen arrests and uh, you know, a discovery of a stockpile of weapons. There was a real concern that the occupiers here in Ottawa, where I met, also have um, some some access to weaponry as well, potentially some areas where they may be stashing weapons. That's exactly why I'm sitting in this car right now. We've been out trying to find mm. a couple of those locations. Um, so there is a real concern here that not only you know are there elements of this occupation of this protest that are extremist in nature, but also that some of the organizers are using this as cover uh, for mm-hmm. some kind of occupation, some kind of confrontation uh, with the government. There is concerns here uh, that some of these people are not going to go home even if police come out in force and are willing and able to put a line in the sand. And, and to defend themselves, police here are outnumbered. They're outgunned. They are uh, outprepared. They're outmaneuvered. And, you know, there's really no telling when this could end or how this could end. I have so, I mean, many, just to... I have so many questions for you. I'm, I'm going to share you, gentlemen, with our audience who are asking these questions. I'm going to ask you to do it rapid fire so we can get in as many as possible. So Ken says, I'm from Canada. These guys are the dangerous right wing They've been, they've been found with guns and ammunition. Amal, have you seen that? Have you, do you know that? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I was saying, I think the organizers um, are definitely uh, dangerous people. And, and uh, uh, as Justin mentioned, the Coots, uh, the Coots border, which is now cleared, it looks like, um, was largely brought to an end because the RCMP um, came in after they found um, stashes of weapons, a massive, mm-hmm. quite a large stash of weapons, um, as well as arrested uh, 13 or so people. Um, and and so th- there's there's no doubt that um, other elements in other other cities are similarly armed, uh, just not openly yet. Um, I think that was part of the reason why they brought in the Emergencies Act as well. Um, the public safety minister just said, you know, um, we may not have all the facts, meaning the public may not have all the facts. And I think that's kind of what he was hinting at. Yeah. Manan, go ahead. You were going to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I was just going to mention that it is very uh, disappointing to see that when it is called a freedom convoy organized by truckers, we are not hearing the real issues, the genuine, actual, perennial issues being, uh, you know, faced by truckers. Whether you name the infrastructure deficit or congestion on our highways, lack of twin highways in, up in the north, you know, we need immigration reforms. You know, there have been wage theft issues, safety and compliance, not enough rest areas. All these are issues which are impacting every trucker out there. But yeah. Have we seen a single placard on no. these issues? When, no, man, and I'm smiling entire... because this is a whole new yeah. protest that, that hasn't even reached the streets. So maybe the... Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. yeah when, the, when the entire world is looking at you, when yeah. the entire global media is looking at truckers, there's nobody who's talking about the real issues. You know, I think that is the missing point and that is where the you know disappointing comes in. Let me bring in some more thoughts here, uh, Justin um, and Amar and Manan, uh, from YouTube. An opinion, I'm really interested in your opinion, back to our viewer. It's not only about truckers, this protest. It's about government and not being able to force people to put things into their bodies that they don't want. Is that an opinion, a thought, Justin, you've seen on the road? Of course. I mean, there's plenty of people here who 
you know, do not believe the vaccines are safe. You don't want to be uh, forced to put, you know, to take the vaccine who object to the science, who are misinformed about the science, who do not trust government, do not, do not trust uh, pharmaceutical industries. Um, but the reality is no one's forcing them to get the vaccine. They're saying, if you want to keep working, if you want to come to work every day, if you want to go meet your coworkers, you're going to go pick up, you know, you're going to go pick up uh, deliveries. You're going to cross the border. If you're going to travel, then yes, you have to be vaccinated. You, you, you can choose to be unvaccinated if you want. There will be consequences. This is how society works. This is the compromise we have to live in a society where there is health care and roads and police services. You can't drive around with a driver's license. You can't drive around without a seatbelt. You can't uh, bring your gun around uh, if it's not in a holster or we don't have a, a permit for it. There are rules we have to abide by. And one of those rules is you have to get vaccinated against a deadly virus to make sure that you don't pass it on to others and to make sure you don't clog up our health care system, which is already under strain. That is the reason we have these mandates. If, if you don't like it, that, that's fine. You don't have to get vaccinated, but there will be consequences for it. There's also this bizarre idea that I, I've heard a few times that, you know, th they seem to be think, uh, thinking that there are no regulations whatsoever and there are no kind of vaccine mandates already. Like my daughter, before she can go to daycare, has to have a, a whole slew of vaccines and already have and, and we have vaccine passports. It's a little yellow card that we have to show the school before anyone's allowed in, uh, to, to go to school there. So this idea that um, this is some new thing that is just invented by the Trudeau government to stifle freedoms, I think, um, is, 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 a, is a major problem. And, large, and, and a lot of that comes from this kind of uh, what, what uh, the WHO has called the infodemic, right? This kind of pandemic of misinformation um, and, and disinformation and conspiracy theories around uh, the pandemic, the lockdown and the mandate, which has been yeah. very prevalent since about March 2020 onwards. And, and so that's kind of colored a lot of what people, these people have, have uh, decided what you know this vaccine is or this pandemic is, that it's a hoax, that it's a kind of plot by the deep state elite to uh, control them um, and so on. And so I think a lot of these ideas um, have been building for some time and, and uh, now, now we're kind of seeing the culmination of that. Um, I just want to ask you briefly about a post that Karen Kaplan asked the stream to investigate for us. I'm going to do that via you. Karen says, elite Canadian special forces operators have been in convoy protests and ferrying supplies to Ottawa occupation. It's concerning that radicalisation in a unit that may be called upon to protect the prime minister. Is that a conspiracy theory? Does that have any water, any weight to it? What's going on there, Amar? Um, this was a story, I think, a day or two ago. Uh, there were some individuals being investigated uh, for being involved in the convoy. I think maybe Justin has some more info on the details of it. But I think yeah. um, this is this has been a concern for a long time, not just with this protest, but uh, we saw, you know, pa the, uh, Patrick Matthews a few years, uh, a few months ago, or a few years ago now, um, arrested for you know being part of uh, several far right movements. And so this fear <coughs> of um, far right elements within our military. Um, it, really got going after the January 6th insurrection in the U.S. and has also been a concern in Canada um, for some time now. And so yeah. I think we're just seeing some of those elements um, bubble to the surface. I want to bring in... Yeah. Yeah, yes, Justin, go the, ahead. The, the, the reality is that that, that that report is wildly mischaracterized. Mm. Uh, that's not at all what's happening. There are a handful of um, uh, members of the Canadian Armed Forces who are under investigation. It is wrong to say special forces are funneling or ferrying supplies to the occupation. It is wrong to say the Canadian Armed Forces or any unit thereof supports the occupation or is or is assisting in it. Uh, that's just not at all what's happening. In fact, the Canadian Armed Forces are taking this incredibly seriously. They're investigating any of their members uh, sought to be participating or uh, helping at all. Ditto with um, uh, police forces across the country. Uh, ditto with really uh, any major organization. I know that there is uh, a lot of internal anxiety in any police force in any uh, military uh, unit um, of anyone there thought to be even supportive uh, of this of this occupation. They recognize it for what it is, which was an, is an illegal occupation of the capital, and in some cases, the borders. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of tolerance for anyone who's uh, tasked with upholding the law, uh, participating in, in a violation of it. Let's bring in Prime Minister yeah. Justin Trudeau here, if I may. I'm just going to push on because we've just got a few minutes left. Uh, the Emergency Act was, was brought into play on uh, February the 14th, so just about 24 hours ago. This is Prime Minister Trudeau. We're not using the Emergencies Act to call in the military. 
We're not suspending fundamental rights or overriding the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We are not limiting people's freedom of speech. We are not limiting freedom of peaceful assembly. We are not preventing people from exercising their right to protest legally. We are reinforcing the principles, values, and institutions that keep all Canadians free. Justin, you seen any difference yet now that the Emergency Act is, been, um, is, is now in play? No, none, none whatsoever. Right. I, I anticipate some people have, have left. Um, I'm sure uh, one or two trucks have, have, have pulled up stakes and gone home. Um, but uh, we were just chatting with some folks who were manning the, um, the sort of satellite locations, supply depots mm -hmm. outside the city, and they say they don't care. They don't care whether their insurance gets suspended, whether their license get re gets revoked, whether their bank accounts get frozen, whether the police start laying more fines. There was a party yesterday or the day before of a bunch of the protesters flushing um, the fines they've received down the porta potties uh, they've set up just outside the encampment. Um, not, none of this has dissuaded them. None of this has, has made them think twice. Um, these people uh, are here for the long haul. Uh, they believe, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to say everybody here believes this, mm -hmm. but there are, there are definitely a core contingent of people here who believe the government is illegitimate, corrupt, uh, out to get them, um, spreading spreading lies uh, about the vaccines or, or, or beyond. Um, there is a there is this has become a home and a yeah. hub for all manner of vaccine disinformation, anti-government disinformation, patriot movements, um, and 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 folks who who don't want to see things continue as the way they are and will stay here until it changes. I'm going to play absolutely and, and yes, man, go and, ahead. I do, and I do and I do think that you know people really need to understand that many of these restrictions, they are provincially regulated. You know, the Justin Trudeau-led federal government has nothing to do with what's happening here in Ontario or in Alberta or Saskatchewan for that matter. We really need to know that those restrictions, if there are any, they are you know, based upon healthcare limitation. The city where I live in, Brampton, we had a healthcare emergency declared even prior to COVID. You know, when COVID was declared in March 2020, we are still living in a healthcare emergency. So there is, you know, shortage of healthcare facilities in many of the largely, you know, populated areas. There is shortage of uh, healthcare workers. We had uh, army to be called in for caring of our long-term care residents. So yeah, there are situations which really need to be handled effectively, timely, by all levels of government. Man, I'm just going to ask for your brief reaction to this. I, I want to show you a couple of videos. This is Israel here on my laptop. This is a lookalike protest, okay, inspired by Ottawa. So, uh, convoy in Israel. I'll stop that there. I'm going to go now to New Zealand. Protests in New Zealand inspired by the Freedom Convoy. Uh, one more just to show you, uh, and this is in Finland, this is in, in Helsinki. When you look at this, knowing that it started in Ottawa, what do you think? Well, you know, things are no different in so many countries where there have been some of the strictest, harshest, uh, you know, lockdown conditions. People don't want to be dictated what to do, what not to do. There has to, people want to come out and lead their normal life once again. But every time they try to, there is a new variant of concern. There are international obligations. There are international restrictions. So, yeah, it's more of frustration. It's more of COVID fatigue. But we really need to know that the WHO World Health Organization has still not called it off. Unless they call it off, many of the global restrictions are not going to go away that easily, whether the uh, you know convoy is here in Ottawa, Canada, or in any part of the globe. It's really good, gentlemen, to speak to you because there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there. Um, you've helped us understand, Manan, from the trucker's point of view, Amar, you, you've been studying right-wing groups for a long time, so you've helped us understand that. And Justin, you're out there in the thick of things and you're correcting some of the thoughts and, and, and opinions that are coming through from our audience, and I really, really thank you. Um, it's been such an educational and useful 25 minutes and it went really fast. Gentlemen, thank you for being on the stream. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for your YouTube comments and questions. I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.